In the last video, we have understood what is meant by open closed principle. In this video, let us try to practically understand the OCP using the scenario which I have explained in the previous video. Since already we have created the logger class file, considering that we shall practically understand how to work with the open closed principle. Now, before we start writing the code, let us create the table within the SQLite database for maintaining the error log information. So, let me first click on the create table button and let me provide the name for the table as error log and let me add the fields ID as primary key and auto increment column and then one more field to maintain the error message. So, let me type in message and the data type I would like to have as text. Let me click on the OK button to create the table. Now, let us verify what is the data present within the table. So, let me click on the Browse Data tab and let me select the table as error log to verify if there is any data. And we can observe there is no record available. And we are sure about the result right as we have created the table just now. And one important point we need to remember here is that if you create a table or make any changes in the DB browser, make sure you click on the right changes to commit the changes. Now, let me flip to the Visual Studio code for writing our application. Let me first create a new file and let me specify the name of the application as ocp.py and let me provide some room space for the coding. Already in the previous program srp.py, we have defined the logger class and also we have a requirement to interact with the SQLite database, right? So let us first import all the required packages. So let me type in from srp import logger, import syslog, import SQLite 3 and from SQLite 3 import error. Now, let us define the class error logger and the methods to store the information within the text file and also within the SQLite database. So, let me type in class error logger of inherits logger colon def write log to file of self comma message colon with open log doc text comma a as writer colon writer dot write of message plus a new line character and then writer dot flush. This code will write the error message within the log file. Next, we need to define one more method to write the log entry within the database, right? So, let me type in def write log to db of self comma message colon con equal to sqlite 3 dot connect of sql db dot db sql equal to insert into error log of message values of 0 dot format of message. Next, let me execute the statement. So, let me type in con dot execute of sql and con dot commit to save the changes to the database. Now, let us try to create the application code. Whenever there is an exception raised, I wanted to even store the date and time along with the error message. So, let me type in from date time import date time. Let us write a very simple block of code to get an exception. So, let me type in a equal to int of input of enter value for number 1 and b equal to int of input of enter value for number 2. I hope you might have guessed the simple program what I am writing now, right? So, okay, let me define the variable to maintain the result. So, let me type in result equal to a divided by b. Now, let us display the result print f of a divided by b equal to result. If something goes wrong, then we will have our exception handling block. So, let me type in accept exception as ex colon and let us define an instance for the error logger. So, let me type in el equal to error logger message equal to from ocp.py program slash an error colon error occurred while performing calculations. Please check the inputs slash and date and time colon. Let us display the current date and time. So, let me type in date time dot now slash and a couple of hyphens for beautifications. Now, 
Once we have prepared the message, let us invoke our methods. So let me type in el dot write log to system of message, el dot write log to file of message, and el dot write log to db of message. And finally, the client also need to get the error message, right? So let me type in print of error colon message. Now let us execute the program. Now let me provide the value for number 1 as 10 and for number 2 as 2. We got the result 10 divided by 2 equal to 5.0. Once again let us execute the program. This time for number 1 let me provide the value as 10 and for number 2 let me provide the value as 0. As expected, we can observe an error message is displayed on the terminal. Let us verify if this message is stored in our log or not. First, let me open the explorer. We can observe a file with the name called as log.txt was created. Let me open the file. If I open the file, we can observe the error message has got recorded within the file. And then let us observe within the system log if the entry is made or not. So let me type in console and within the log reports we can observe the system log message has been added. And finally let me click on the DB browser and let me click on the refresh button. We can observe the error message has been added as a log entry within the database. Hope you have understood open closed principle. Now before we try to understand the next solid design principle, let us have some clarification whether you have understood the concept properly or not. To do that, now let us assume that now the client is asking for a new requirement. Let us say that the requirement is to add the log entry to in the Cosmos database maintained within the Azure cloud then how do you handle that? The answer is very easy, right? We need to just add the new method write log to cloud within the error logger class. Friends, now how many of you consider this as the right answer? Everyone or no one? If you think that this is the right answer, please go to the previous video and once again watch that and come back. Because if you have add the new method within the error logger class then you are violating the open closed principle right so what we need to do is in this case we need to create a subclass for the error logger class maybe a cloud error logger and within the subclass we should have added the new method for example write log to cloud and if you have followed the other alternate solution I have provided in the previous video that is using the abstract class then you might create one more subclass for the abstract class error logger with the name cloud error logger and you need to override the log error method to write the log entry to the cloud. Hope you have understood the concept of open closed principle. In the next video, we shall understand the third principle of solid that is LISCO substitution principle. See you in the next video.